Hey guys, what's up? It's Finch here. I'm back with my eighth 1v1 PL series. But as you don't know, this is in Generation 6 Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire Oras 1v1 Omega game that I've grown quite fond of and quite experienced in in the recent weeks. Up to this point, I am 6 and 1. You should have seen my week 7 series on the channel earlier today. If not, check it out. I played Scarf 2 tonight in a nice, clean ish. <laughs> four game series that I quite enjoyed. I hope you did too. And I hope you guys enjoy the video as well. But now we are back in business with my semi-final series against Joker. Now I will reveal that my team advanced to the final. So there's going to be at least one more series that will bring to the channel probably about a week from today. Maybe a bit after that. I, the game's going to be next weekend because the other series and semi-finals went to tie break. So those guys took forever to get to us in finals, but my team advanced. I will not reveal, however, what happened in my series because this is just one of eight or ten or however many series. So even if I win, my team can lose. Even if I lose, my team can win. That's the beauty of it. So this is not the be all end all, but it still counts a lot towards deciding the outcome of our semifinal series. So the pressure is on and I love the pressure. I love the stakes being high. So let's go ahead and see if I can deliver with that or if I am going to end up looking like a pathetic little piece of crap. I need to remember to turn the music off in these replays. Um, this is the first three games, I'm not gonna spell the results of the fourth game. Give me one second, guys. I just gotta do that. My bad, guys. Yeah, I just didn't want to reveal the number of games the series went to, but I also want to make sure I turned all the replay music off before going, because I've had accents and videos where I've had like two music, like my background music and the game music both going on at once, and that is like borderline intolerable to listen to, so yeah. Anyway, moving forward from that. Game one, I had a cool idea. I want to bring two Metagross because they carry such a wide array of attacks. I can kind of pick and choose mine, but they don't really know what I got going. Or they know I got so much going that they can't cover it. You know, kind of like a bam bam sort of thing. I know that made no sense whatsoever, but it made sense to me. So that's how the brain of a 66 player functions in the metagame without species class, I guess. Um, I figure you go between like Meteor Mash and Bullet Punch to cover a lot of fairies, cover faster Pokemon, you know, Earthquake for specific fires and even um, not risking Meteor Mash actually against rocks. Um, Thunder Punch for waters, you know, there's an option running Toxic for stall Pokemon. There's the option of running Substitute or Protect to take advantage of free turns and or generate my speed boost with a free turn giving to the opponent, but at minimum risk I'm not taking damage. There's the option for running Magnet Rise for ground types like Landorus and Garchomp. You can live a choice band Garchomp, for example, and be like, oh, it's lit. Um, there are a ton of different things you could do. That's the point. Ice Punch even is viable for ground as well. Hammer Arm for specific, you know, normals and steels and um, other type Pokemon. I'm blanking, but yeah, the um, point is, between two Metagross, you could do an awful lot. But in this matchup, I faced Pyrog, which was going to own both of my Metagross. Spoiler alert. Um, it was going to absolutely toast them. It was going to overheat them to Oblivion. I also faced Gyarados, which it should be one Metagross plus the other. It's pretty intuitive. One of them has Thunder Punch, one of them doesn't. I should have a little plus one crunch with those. It's kind of easy to beat that. But also, Chiram usually is going to handle Gyarados. I mean, you know what I said on this team? It could be something used specifically designed to beat Pokemon that beat both the... Uh, Mega Sableye, like for example, the Mega, uh, sorry, sorry, both the Mega Metagross, like Mega Sableye, for example, it could be designed for that, or it could just be a general add-on. Personally, I liked how common of these two, though, so I don't know, but most Jerem run Fusion Bolt, even then, Outrage, maybe a little trick, Ice may be a little trick, depending on Gyarados and the Megas, etc. It should Mega turn one against Jerem always, but even then, Fusion Bolt could do a KO or three a KO, and you can't do enough back. It's awkward, it's dicey. Point is, Gyarados isn't always favored in that 1v1, and especially isn't against sets I've used before, so I think in his place he is predicting me to bring Kira. So, given that, I predicted him to bring Gardevoir, which is going to always own my Kira. I have never used the uh, Fairy Resistant Berry plus uh, Iron Head or, Glace, or Icy Wind plus Iron Head variant. So, yeah. With that, uh, with that said, though, it's hard because looking at the matchup, if I bring Metagross into Pyroar, I'm screwed, but I kind of thought he would never bring Pyroar into Karen Black, because it's going to get owned by it, unless he, like, crits Overheat. So I'm like, you know what? Screw it. We're going to go with Metagross and bank on and bring Gardevoir. But I actually brought the Thunder Punch Metagross. My Thunder Punch Metagross was Magnet Rise, Protect, Thunder Punch, Earthquake. And that means it's going to be Gyarados if he brings that as a mid-ground. 
and it should be Gardevoir 2, but I miscalculated something in that I thought that after Protect I was quicker than Gardevoir, but I was quicker than regular Gardevoir, not Mega, and I calculated regular Gardevoir, which killed me. Not only did it influence the damage outputs with Thunder Punch or Earthquake, but on top of that, it also messed with the speed, and Gardevoir oftentimes covers carries Encore, and if you, Encore's mean to protect on turn one, if I'm slower than it, which I'm not faster than max, plus speed 100s and stuff like that, I could actually lose to offensive uh, or just fast Gardevoir and get Encore to protect, and that'd be bad. I also, if I Thunder Punch turn one on like a Wisp, then I can potentially lose if I don't get any paras or rolls and he is um, hidden power ground or he's hyper voice. If he's like a hyper beam side shot grant, I should be able to beat that anyway, depending on rolls again, but don't really love putting myself in that spot. So in hindsight, given that I um, miscalced, the play was to either bring the other Metagross, which had steel moves, plural, so always going to beat any guard of war, period. And on top of that, it... Um, it didn't have a chance against Gyarados, so it was a bit riskier, but, or, bring the Metagross I did and never ever protect turn one, give myself the odds with, say, Thunder Punch spam, Para, Earthquake spam, and, you know, maybe he's not as defensive as he'd like to be, and then he dies before he can kill me, because I'm pretty sturdy myself, and that also covers Gyarados. Either way, I ended up doing something that was largely due to the miscalc. I brought the Metagross with Thunder Punch plus Earthquake plus Magnet Rise. I protected turn one on the Willows to be faster than it, but... I wasn't actually faster than it, which just drove me bonkers. This is complete human error, complete Finchinator error, complete misplay on my end, I'm trying to say here. And, um, man, you can't make misplays like this in this situation. It's, you can't. It's completely and utterly unacceptable, and I have no excuses whatsoever. And I am genuinely sorry to my team for this one. Uh, this is a game I like it away. And you can't do that. You gotta be better than this. You gotta calculate the right things. You gotta use your entire timer. And I used a lot of the timer to think it through, but I was thinking it through based off of false pretenses, and I made that mistake. And 100% accountability there might be. So I gotta pay more attention to detail. I gotta make sure I get myself in the game with the right mindset. And all in all, I felt pretty confident I could do so. Yeah, obviously the Gardevoir is gonna beat me as I'm locked in to protect. So yeah. Game two, he brings an interesting team. He brings me Porygon, a Pokemon I'm not super familiar with, but I'm thinking my Leech Seed, a variant of uh, Venusaur, I could take it. I'm thinking specific variants of Kyurem could also take it if it's Fusion Bolt, so I knew that I had chances against that, depending on sets and his set. Um, I wasn't super worried. I figured maybe it's like Acid Armor, Rest, Toxic Skull or some crap like that. I don't know. It could even run Growth. Um, it could be Specs Hydro to kind of bluff those sets and function as like a Finesse Specs Greninja type Pokemon, if you will, like a bulkier slower one i guess it has high special attack um dragonite i'm always beating with venusaur um it's i've got charm spoiler alert in band wouldn't it kill me they have to be like a hurricane right and i never see them they're all physical so yeah and dragonite's gonna lose a charm unless it's scarf and i'm not scarf and then if i'm hot bound i should actually beat scarf so yeah um i thought he was gonna bring drachi because of that because also the dragonite and especially vaporeon should beat my heatran in all likelihood so going in, I'm like, okay, he's probably bringing Jirachi. Um, unless he scares Heatran. If he's scared of Heatran, then he's probably going to bring Vaporeon. So I'm thinking, hmm, Scarf Jirachi, if it doesn't get two flinches in a row, actually he's likely to lose to my uh, Venusaur. I could get Leech and or Charm off, and then all of a sudden Heart Stamp is only doing about 15 to 17% on average because I am super physically bulky, and Scarf Jirachi really is the only one I've seen. So I felt actually pretty decent. I actually thought there's a chance Venusaur could 3 out of this game if it doesn't get unlucky. Um, against the Jirachi. I thought that was a favorable 1v1. I thought I was going to beat Dragonite Barring Crit, and I thought any Vaporeon I should be able to handle with the combination of Leech Seed and Sludge Bomb. So, lo and behold, let's go. He brings Dr Jirachi into Venusaur, which is fine. I didn't bring Heatran, but I didn't risk it against other two, so I felt pretty good about this. But then, turn one, I Leech, and he reveals Substitute, and I'm like, what is this? He's freaking Sub Thunder Wave, and I'm like, damn, that's kind of wild. And honestly, I'll be the first to admit it. I'm very, 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 very surprised this is not Scarf. I feel like you need a Scarf to cover a lot of matchups. Things like Art Chops could get way out of hand otherwise. But maybe, I don't know, maybe this was like Resist Berry for the eye. Whatever. It's fine. Um, he got me. He had a chance of beating me anyway, but now I, I can't touch it. I'm Charm, Leech Seed, 
Sludge Bomb since. So yeah, behind the substitute, Jirachi's just came over. So two very lopsided, embarrassing losses to start things off there. Um, game two, I was happy with how I played, though. I think I picked the right Pokemon. I made the right assumptions, and sometimes it still doesn't work out. So that's fine. At the end of the day, you just got to say, okay, I did what I could, but my opponent went above and beyond and did what he could, and he took some risks, and they paid off. So good on him. Game number three, I was like, okay, back to the wall. I got to win three in a row now, so you going to make some hard reads. Right at the bat, I'm looking at his team. Greninja, Zard, Metagross against mine, Archops, um, Slowbro, and uh, Karen Black. And I'm like, this is Zard Y for sure. This is very likely Zard Y. I have a feeling it's going to be Zard Y, and that should beat my Slowbro. Greninja should also beat my Slowbro. But I've got a Karen Black EV to live Zard Y and Arch Ups that should nuke Zard Y, so felt really good about those two there. Coupled with the fact that Greninja, if it's not Specs, is always going to be losing to my uh, Slowbro, and if it is Specs, it's going to be losing to my uh, my Karen. I wasn't Scarf Arch Ups, so I was banned, so yeah. All in all, I was thinking, okay, if he expects Archops, he brings the Greninja. If he expects the Slowbro, he brings the Zard Y. If he expects the Kyurem Black, he brings the Metagross, or the Greninja works if he's depending on the set as well. But he probably doesn't bring the Zard. He's like, it could be Hobbun it could be Special Defensive. I could cover both Zards with the Kyurem as the point. So, I'm like, hmm, you know, there's a chance that the Metagross also should beat the Archops. And it obviously, he beats the Kyurem Black, so that's two out of three. And I'm thinking, thinks that I, I'm, I'm as a 6v6 player, I might expect like a Specs Dark plus Greninja more likely than like the subset that we see a lot in 1v1. So he thinks that maybe I think Slowbro is not the best pick. So I'm like, you know what, Slowbro kind of is the best pick though. It's going to shut down the Metagross, which he's going to bring. And I got the call right, so that worked wonders. He's Thunder Punch, sure, but that one does 31 and I could just, yeah. I, I could basically Iron Defense, then Scald, and that'll do the trick. Nothing crazy there. You've seen this gameplay before, I'm sure. And if not, here, here, you could watch it again. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna click Slowbro, Iron Defense up. No, I'm kidding, I'm not gonna show the game again. I'll, you know, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. Just, just once. Slowbro, we're gonna Iron Defense up. After taking like 31, yeah, and then we're doing like 15, and I was like, okay, game's over. Unless he gets like thun th Thunder, Punch, Para, into Full Para, into Full Para, into Full Para, into Full Para. You need like all that, basically, once I slack off. So yeah, game ends on, I get the second burn. He tries to go Mash for Raise, but that's not enough, and that'll be that. He can't crit me or anything, so yeah. Game number four. I'm like, whoa there. I tried to bring another Slowbro to lure him into a false sense of security because he'd think I'd use it again, but his team kind of gets owned by it. Trainer's going to lose to it. I don't know what the uh, Mew does, but offensively against common things, it doesn't really run things. It also covers Slowbro, so I don't know. I kind of like my odds with Slowbro all of a sudden now, so yeah, well, uh, we'll take it, I guess, or maybe we won't. I don't know. I was like thinking like crap. I want to bring Heatran so bad because my Heatran could beat his Treetran. And it's definitely going to beat Mawile. But like he surely has to have either Heatran set. looks like plus speed with Rock Tomb and Balloon. Or a Mew set that covers all Heatran. So I'm like, you know what? He's not going to... He's going to expect Heatran from me. So he's going to bring what he has to be Heatran, right? So I bring my Slowbro if he's going to do that. But... Also, because it kind of covers Mawile usually, um, it covers Heatran usually, and Mew, I just, it's a wild card, so you can't be sure. But um, I get the Mawile right, but it turns out that he actually wasn't a like Mew set that beat me, or like a random Dark Pulse Heatran. As I Iron Defense as he Sword Dances, he was Punishment Mawile for the Slowbro matchup in particular. Which, if I was going to pick this team and use Slowbro to I should have just brought Heatran here and picked that side of the 50 50. But man, I didn't know. And plus six punishment. He's going to do the deal here. And from there, I obviously got an X. I can't kill him. So, seeing as he's quicker, it's good game. Uh, congratulations, Joker. Nice win. Thankfully, my team advanced to finals anyway. I love you guys so much, Porygons. Thank you for being the GOATs. And I'm excited for my final series against my guy Dez. So yeah, it should be good. Stay tuned for that next week. And I'm sure to like, comment, subscribe. All right, guys. Happy Easter. I'll leave you now. Bye.